السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات آئی ویلکم یو ٹو دا ورچول یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان وی آر گیٹنگ ان ٹو لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی ون آف برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکس ٹو فور ود دی کانسیپٹ آف پوزیشننگ کنکلوڈیڈ بہائنڈ آس اینڈ ناؤ ہیونگ اندر نیو کانسیپٹ آف برانڈ ایکسٹینشن ایٹ ہینڈ دی کانسیپٹ آف پوزیشننگ از ویری سینٹرل and you will see how significant it is toward your understanding of all the concepts that is now going to follow within the course. It is very clear from the concept of positioning that there is no one positioning that can satisfy different needs within the category, meaning there has to be different products to satisfy different needs. And in order to satisfy those needs, you've got to look for different points of difference and those points of difference after identified will lead you to introduce new products. You get back to the positioning map and uh, start looking at the quality with which you are going to produce. You look at the pricing pattern, you look at competition and you might as well get back to that price quality index in order to be very sure with which segment of the market you're going to hit and uh, why it is going to be hit. Uh, so in other words, you have to keep up with uh, the evolution and to keep pace with that, you have to keep on evolving points of difference. To give you an example, uh, you have different kinds of uh, the edible oils and uh, they really have uh, the points of difference. Some people use soybean, some people use canola, some people use olive oil. And then you see there is uh, a an offering okay, which is um, everything rolled into one and that's what you call the vegetable oil and that's a mix of so many different vegetables. You have to be very convincing with the customer and the market while you have introduced a new product because the new introduction has got to be based on a very meaningful difference with what is already available on the market. And therefore, you've got to communicate to the customer that the offering that you have now come up with is very different from the one they are used to. And which in turn means that you have to create a new image for the new entry that reflects the new promise with an evolved brand contract in place. How do you do that? You do that with the help of um, two or three different ways. I mean, either of the three ways. The one is that you stick within the value framework of the existing brand and do not go too far away from the core, meaning you keep the same brand name and introduce something under that name. The other way is that you move a little away or too far away from the core identity and create a new product but still remain under the same brand name. So the value framework in this case is going to be different. The third way you handle this kind of a situation is that you introduce something absolutely new and that's what, that's what you call a stand-alone brand. You will recall the lecture uh, in which I talked about different the types of brands You have family brands, you have uh, umbrella brands, you have uh, standalone brands. So the third way managers address the situation in which they see needs evolving, in which they see opportunities uh, for expansion and growth, they come up with something which is totally new. Now, this third way is something we are not going to talk about uh, in relation to brand extension, because it really is not an extension and you will see how. Uh, the former two ways which I talked about, meaning staying very close or within the value framework of the existing brand and moving away from the value framework but still keeping the same brand name are the two situations which deal with brand extension. Uh, we're gonna talk about these one by one. Uh, before I start talking about that, um, Let me explain to you what a value framework is. 
I did touch upon the values a brand carries uh, while I was talking about uh, the brand vision, but let me uh, refresh our knowledge and uh, the understanding of uh, the concept. Uh, you have uh, introduced a, a brand of uh, sporting goods in any one of the sports, and uh, naturally you have introduced something which is durable, uh, which is long-lasting, uh, which is very serious uh, because uh, it has to uh, withstand the rigors of uh, um, the, the, the play you know, while the player is uh, um, using that equipment. And uh, it therefore uh, has to uh, give total uh, the satisfaction to the one who's using. So the values from that point of view of the brand are um, you know, durable, it is uh, serious, it is uh, long lasting, and uh, it is very caring, and it is uh, very responsive because uh, while you're playing, you have to, uh, the, the equipment has to respond uh, to your instincts uh, at the spur of the moment. Another example of uh, the values could be a chain of restaurants, a chain of family restaurants. They're talking about food, family, fun. Now, these are the values of uh, that particular restaurant. Uh, and why these uh, the values uh, have been chosen? Uh, because uh, the restaurant really values families coming there and enjoying their food and having fun. So the, the set of values uh, become uh, the brand persona, if you recall. And uh, based on that, you develop the brand contract and uh, so on and so forth. And that is how you arrive at the right most positioning. Um, we are still talking about um, different situations in which uh, the managers respond uh, in different ways in dealing with um, uh, situations of expansion and growth. A brand extension basically is all about expansion and growth. And uh, as the terminology suggests, uh, we do something with uh, the brand name in order to introduce new offerings. Brand extension, therefore, is the study and practice of deciding what to do in situations that evolve with changing needs and what to do in situations that offer an opportunity to get into a new market altogether. Uh, the first situation, meaning responding to evolving needs, examples could be a soup manufacturer getting into so many different flavors. You being the manufacturer are selling a packaged cream of chicken soup, why should you not also start offering cream of mushroom or chicken corn, for example? If you are a manufacturer of biscuits, you offer biscuits in different tastes and different packs. If you are into detergents, you're selling your detergent in powder, you may like to start selling that also in a liquid form. So these are a few examples of uh, the situations with which uh, could crop up because of the evolving needs. The other situation that I talked about is uh, an opportunity to get into a new market altogether. It is uh, like um, somebody manufacturing cameras, getting into photocopying machines. There are synergies involved as far as the manufacturing process is concerned, but as far as the use is concerned, the two items the deal with two very different markets. It is like uh, somebody into blending of tea with getting into soups or vice versa. It is like uh, somebody into the fruit juices wishing to get into the area of dairy products like milk, butter, cheese, margarine, so on and so forth. So these are the two situations which deal with uh, the brand extensions. And uh, we being the brand managers could have to decide according to the circumstances and according to the fit, meaning the situation that fits with the, 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 the type of brand extension that we should be carrying out. The fact remains that uh, all these things deal with the opportunity of expansion and growth. And that is something which takes us into the area of leveraging. Managers like to leverage their brands because the brands are powerful, because the brands are valuable, and they think they have to multiply that value. They have to get into different categories, or they have to offer new introductions within the same category 
with uh, uh, more value to add to the company. Managers like to capitalize on uh, the brand as an asset because the temptation to do so is huge for obvious reasons. The reasons I talked about, the brand being valuable and the brand being very powerful having the capacity to add more and more value to the company. But of course, there's a limit to it, and uh, the managers have got to be very careful in deciding whether when to go for an extension and when not to. That is something which I'm going to talk about a little later. Uh, for the time being, let us um, talk about why managers like to keep the same brand name. They like to keep the same brand name either for the variants of uh, the existing brand or introducing a new product altogether under the same brand name because customers in the marketplace are already very familiar with the brand name. And that provides the company and the managers with automatic natural advantages. And which goes without saying, just imagine the difficulties and complications involved in introducing a new brand with which people are not familiar and the amount of work which brand managers or marketing people have to do to prop that up and then establish that through the years, not days and months, years. Anyway, that is not to say that new brands are not to be introduced and it is always that we work with the brand extensions. No, we are looking into different situations which really actuate managers to go for leveraging. And leveraging, like I said, is something which is driven by expansion and growth. It is the factors of expansion and growth which lead managers into leveraging their brands. And that is why and how they start thinking of whether to introduce something which responds to evolving needs and staying very close to the core identity of the brand or the inner substance of the brand or the original value framework of the brand or to get into something which is absolutely entirely new and different, meaning a new category altogether. Managers feel the need to leverage their brands. This means that managers have got to look at the whole thing with a lot of meaning and purpose. Leveraging cannot be without meaning and it cannot be without a purpose. When managers start leveraging their brand only because an existing brand has a lot of value in the marketplace, uh, but the new entry does not really address any specific need, then managers are wandering in marketing no man's land with no goal in sight. And that is where brand proliferation starts taking place, uh, which is something negative because it does not really address the very genuine needs. And uh, that has been, uh, if, if that happens, it is the result of managers led into a situation without giving due importance to the factor of having to address genuine needs. I did talk about the factor of the brand proliferation, which is one of the challenges for the marketing people nowadays, for the reason that technological levels have become so high and common that most of the companies are in a position to offer something very similar to the competition and therefore uh, having something on the market which are very similar, uh, eroding the points of difference, eroding in the process um, the brand loyalty and uh, therefore giving uh, the brand managers a lot of um, reason uh, for uh, some thought uh, into looking for uh, the genuine points of difference. Anyway, over-proliferation is a serious threat, uh, we can uh, put it in other words, to the brand management, and that is not the objective. Uh, getting back to the main track of uh, the brand extension, the reason the managers uh, like to get into brand extensions is because uh, extensions are uh, less expensive. Uh, I shouldn't say they're cheaper, but they're far less expensive than new introductions. Uh, according to the one estimate, the cost uh, of introducing a new brand in three major markets, meaning the United States, uh, Japan, and the Europe, um, 
are something like one billion dollars. I mean, those are the total costs, which sounds incredible. The cost of uh, launching a brand under the same brand name, the meaning going for extension, is a fraction of that. And according to uh, the one estimate, with the same source, it is one-fifth. So that you can well imagine the advantage that is there, the, tempta the temptation that is there for managers to introduce uh, the something by the same name. Uh, another reason that uh, the managers uh, they do like to get into extensions instead of uh, uh, new brand names, because according to the same study, 30% of uh, the brands which are introduced under a new name do not survive more, more than three years after they are introduced, whereas the rate of survival in case of uh, the brand extensions is 50%. And this is uh, uh, clarified with the help of uh, this graphical presentation. 30% in case of uh, new brands, and 50% is the survival rate after three years of brand introductions. So this becomes a convincing case for managers to introduce or to be more inclined toward introduction under the same name than under a different name. Another uh, part of uh, the study findings uh, that shows us with the help of another uh, slide that uh, uh, two thirds of uh, the brands introduced belong to the existing brands, the meaning they are brand extensions, and one third of uh, the successful brands uh, that belong to the category, which is the category of new brands. So in other words, of the total brands that are introduced, two thirds, two -third are those uh, which are extensions, and one third are those uh, which are new brands. So this again becomes a, a very convincing case for brand managers to be inclined toward introducing brand extensions. Uh, the definition of uh, a successful brand uh, in the U.S. market is that a brand should be able to turn over like you know, $15 million a year. So two-third of the brands, uh, two-third of the successful brands, uh, which were brand extensions, they all turn over more than $15 million a year. Now, having said that, I think we can conclude from uh, the two screens that we have just seen that uh, the brand extension is uh, a surer, uh, a securer, and a cheaper way of introducing new brands and gaining market share with good results. This uh, completes uh, our uh, brief uh, introduction of uh, what brand extension is. And uh, to give you a very uh, short recap, I would you know, put the whole thing all over again, that uh, there are two different situations. The one is that you try to respond to the evolving needs, and those evolving needs are the ones which are very close to the um, inner core of uh, your uh, brand, which already exists. And uh, the other situation is that uh, the value of the brand actuates you to get into a new market because you see an opportunity there and you are a resourceful company, your brand is very powerful and you think to yourself that by getting into another market, you are going to add value to the company and add value to everything that is going to result from there. And you find it very attractive to start introducing extensions of the brand which already exists. It is uh, the cheaper, it is uh, the securer, it is a surer uh, the way in comparison with introducing new brands and therefore the practice of uh, the brand management is on the rise. Uh, more and more managers and more and more companies, so to say, are getting into the brand extensions. Brand extension has uh, the two different kinds. Uh, the brand extension is a terminology which is uh, used quite loosely uh, because uh, whenever managers talk with each other, they understand uh, what they are talking about. But uh, in order to have uh, a very clear understanding of the concept, let me tell you that brand extension can be uh, divided into two uh, well-differentiated uh, co concepts. Uh, the one is line extension, and the other is uh, what you may call brand extension.
that brand extension in, in itself is different from the overall brand extension as an umbrella. So uh, you can call that the brand diversification. Why? I will come to that. And uh, I already have given you a little bit uh, of uh, the food for thought. Uh, the brand extension basically is uh, the meaning brand diversification, as the terminology suggests, is dealing with new markets and dealing with products which are very different from the ones you're already dealing with. Anyway, let us start talking about uh, the, what line extension is. Getting into different versions of uh, the same base product on the same market is what you call line extension. And examples I already have given you, and this is like uh, the company uh, preparing spices, uh, getting into more uh, traditional and non-traditional spices, and also getting into uh, recipes for uh, different kinds of uh, rice dishes, uh, different kinds of curries, for example, now, these recipes could be different, or rather are different from the spices, but uh, they're meant for the same customer uh, in the same market, and uh, the product is used for pretty much the same purpose. Another example could be cheese, uh, the manufacturer you know, getting into different kinds of uh, sizes and formats. Uh, they're getting into boxes, for example, getting into uh, slices, uh, they're getting into portions. The objective here uh, is to gain more depth of the same market by extending the line. A few more examples could be, you know, getting back to cigarettes, for example. The mild cigarettes, the lighter cigarettes, stronger cigarettes, well, they don't get any stronger. The, the, the fashion is to get into, uh, or the market need is to get into the lighter and mild ones. So these are the examples which explain what line extension is all about. And brand extension or brand diversification, like I told you earlier, is stretching your brand into new areas, into new product fields. Your brand becomes an umbrella brand covering very different segments and the products. The examples that could be from you know, so many different books and these examples, which I'm going to quote, are the part of the marketing literature. Companies like the Mitsubishi, uh, the Philips, and General Electric, they are the huge conglomerates operating into different areas, uh, the producing things like uh, ships and cars and uh, nuclear uh, power plants and electrical appliances and uh, electrical systems and lighting and, you know, different kinds of... Uh, um, the energy equipment and so on and so forth. Uh, so these are the examples of uh, the brand diversification or uh, the brand uh, extension. What you're doing is the, from one particular category you are a part of, you decide to get into a different market. It of course is different if you are building ships and you decide to get into building cars. In terms of uh, consumer uh, consumables, if you are into um, accessories of uh, cars uh, or, or spare parts uh, for the car industry, you decide one day uh, to get into the food items, that is real diversification because uh, the two markets or the two production processes uh, they do not really have any synergies and uh, that's what you call brand diversification. Uh, we are going to talk about line extension and brand extension or brand diversification uh, in detail uh, from now onwards. So line extension and uh, the brand extension are two very well differentiated concepts which have got to be understood very clearly in order to establish which one has uh, a particular fit with which situation so that you can decide very clearly in a professional way which is the one you should follow. Let me explain um, these two uh, the concepts with uh, the help of uh, the two illustrations uh, on the screen. This is uh, the, what you see is about uh, the line extension. And line extension, uh, as you understand by now, is taking place within the category because it is meant for the same customers and it is meant for the same target segment and it uh, addresses needs which are very, very similar. This is um, 
a manufacturer of, of the biscuits, hypothetically, and uh, the product line with which he is dealing in is line A. Line A because uh, he is dealing in just one product to begin with. But with the passage of time, what is happening is that he is getting into other flavors and other tastes and maybe other sizes. So he has A1. Uh, I mean, that's where he started. And uh, he now has introduced A2. And then he has introduced A3. So if you take a look at these three offerings, the fact of the matter is that in our market, one biscuit manufacturer has uh, got more than three offerings. They are into dozens uh, for different occasions. This is what you call a uh, stretch, meaning you are stretching the original product, which is a biscuit, into different tastes and different sizes by extending those uh, into different brands. Uh, because A1 is a different brand. Uh, you may give it any name. A2 is a different brand name. A3 is a different brand name. Now, when I say different brand name, meaning the sub-brands, the main brand, the umbrella brand remains the same because we're talking about brand extension. We're not talking about stand-alone brands. I'm, I'm explaining, you see, A1, A2, A3 in relation to they're having the different um, characteristics, uh, but still staying very close to the inner core of the product biscuit. Let us take a look at uh, the second illustration. As you can see from here, uh, this company, the dealing in uh, biscuits, originally the product A, or line A, is getting into product B, which is not biscuits, which is something else. It could be juices, it could be packaged rice, uh, it could be flour, it could be anything. The company is doing the same thing uh, with line B, which is a different category altogether. It is stretching its brands, meaning it is stretching the line from B1 right down to B3. It could go to like B10 or B12 if it is convinced that it really can come up with very meaningful and purposeful points of difference. Only then the company should stretch the brand Otherwise, consumers are going to be confused and they will not buy the new offerings with the net result that the level of sales will stay wherever it was. Of course, with every new offering, with every new extension that you introduce on the market, you expect a higher level of sales. And that is what the whole thing is all about. If brand extension is not going to bring that increment of sales to the overall volumes, it is not going to be meaningful and it is going to provide you with uh, some food for thought. What is it that you should be doing? Maybe you should withdraw that brand or do something else in order to give uh, a new lease of life to that offering. But we shall discuss that later. Let us now talk about line extension in detail because uh, now we know what a line extension is and uh, what brand extension is, the meaning what brand diversification is. Line extension or extending the line is an evolutionary step in the life of a brand. It occurs whenever we respond to evolving needs, meaning whenever there's a change of needs, whenever there's a change in expectations of consumers who we'll like to come up with something new, and that is when we are trying to address to the evolution taking place in the market. So that is why I said it is an evolutionary step. Uh, one of the marketing experts, uh, the great marketing experts, has said in the following words that like human species who like to adapt to their changing environment, the brands also like to adapt to the changing marketing environment by dividing and subdividing themselves into subspecies. And that is how they sustain themselves. If they do not divide themselves into subspecies, they cannot really sustain themselves. They will just disappear. Every brand has a life cycle. And I will talk about this factor later that uh, it is also because of uh, a limited life cycle that uh, you like to extend your uh, the brands because the one product cannot last forever. So in order to preempt this kind of uh, a scenario that you like to get into something new, uh, giving your mother brand or the umbrella brand a new lease of life. Let us take a look at the different forms and um, 
uh, shapes of uh, line extensions. I have been giving you examples uh, relate, relating biscuits and soups and juices and so on and so forth. But let us now talk about in a little more structured way as to how you really can extend the line. Uh, line extension can take place by multiplying your formats and sizes. And uh, this uh, takes place in case of uh, cars, in case of uh, the drinks, uh, in case of uh, the biscuits also. You have you know, different sizes and you have uh, different formats in order to address needs into different segments of the market you are operating in, meaning the overall category. Just look at uh, the one of the most uh, the popular uh, the cars in your market and uh, you will get the answer. They, you know, they have a car for people in very, very high income bracket and they have a car for people um, in the upper middle class and they have a car for people in the middle class. So this is uh, what you call or what you may call multiplication uh, by way of uh, sizes and formats. The other could be uh, by variety of taste and flavors. You have juices in so many different flavors. You have yogurts in so many different flavors. And I can again give you the example of biscuits in so many different tastes. The examples can, could be endless. Another way that you can extend your line is by multiplying it in terms of uh, ingredients. Take a look at coffee. Those of you who love coffee know that coffee companies talk a lot about uh, caffeine-free coffee. You go to the supermarket and you find stacks of uh, the coffee which says caffeine-free and it is a good positioning. You can also consider another classification uh, in terms of uh, the multiplying your line uh, by genetic form and uh, that um, applies mostly to uh, medicines. And to give you one example from the same area, uh, just take a look at um, painkiller, which uh, the company says uh, is uh, extra strength. It is positioned for uh, all those who are inflicted by headache, for example. Now, there may be some customers complaining that uh, the medicine uh, puts them to sleep. And that gives a reason to brand managers to start thinking about another product or another version which could be positioned for those who feel kind of sleepy, the ones that take that medicine. And they introduce something uh, which um, is positioned uh, against uh, drowsiness. And the company start communicating that, uh, that this does not cause any drowsiness. Uh, you can have uh, a couple of more of the versions of uh, that medicine. In terms of, for example, uh, no allergy. Some people might complain that uh, extra strength is good and it doesn't cause the drowsiness that is also good, but it causes allergy as far as I'm concerned. So that gives uh, the managers another reason, a very good solid reason to go for something else with a different positioning because they really can capitalize on a very distinct point of, point of difference, okay, which is about allergy. So you know what I'm talking about. The company introduces another uh, the version. So this is uh, what you may call the multiplication uh, of uh, the product line in terms of its generic form. Another classification that you might like to consider is uh, the multiplication of uh, the product line with the biophysical form. And the best example that fits here is that of uh, detergents. Powder from powder to uh, liquids, you know, I think that is uh, the perfect example. Another example could be that of uh, the deodorants. Companies uh, the making deodorants in, uh, in stick form, uh, getting into roll-ons and uh, sprays, for example. So that is uh, the multiplication by physical form. Another classification of uh, the multiplication of uh, the product line uh, you may like to consider is the multiplication um, of product add-ons uh, satisfying uh, very closely related needs of the same customer. And uh, the example could be in the area of uh, the cosmetics. A manufacturer, uh, the manufacturing lipstick, for example, getting into mascara and uh, the blush-ons and uh, skincare creams. Another example could be um, that of a manufacturer who's into the making shave cream uh, and then getting into 
things like uh, shower gels and um, hair gel and uh, the deodorants. So this is uh, a very interesting category that uh, they may not be uh, that may not escape your uh, interest and attention. Yet another uh, classification which uh, you may not uh, lose sight of and hence your interest is uh, the multiplication of versions having different applications. But what does this mean? I can uh, make you understand the meaning of this with uh, the help of uh, an example once again. And uh, the example is in the area of uh, the polishes. A manufacturer uh, into the making shoe polish and um, then deciding to uh, get a position another offering uh, get a for those who like to wear suede shoes. So get a, he's going to come up with uh, maybe powder for that or a spray for that or uh, some kind of polish uh, because uh, get a, that polish has a different application. Uh, the same uh, get a manufacturer get a, might like to position get a, one of uh, get a, his versions um, for um, furniture, for example or uh, the marble tops, for example. So these are a uh, few of the examples uh, which uh, relate to the various classifications uh, whereby uh, you can multiply the product line. And um, I think uh, we've had uh, the quite uh, the bit of uh, examples in order to illustrate the concept. And uh, my hope uh, is that you are very clear about uh, what line extension is. Having said that, let us now take a look at uh, the positive sides of uh, line extension. There is nothing in this world which is uh, without a negative side. It also has some negative sides, we shall talk about those. Uh, but let us uh, first uh, concentrate on uh, the positive side of line extension. Uh, first of all, it increases usage. And you know that is one of the primary responsibilities of uh, any uh, the salesperson to uh, see to it or rather marketing person to see to it that usage of the product increases and why uh, would the marketing manager like to see the usage increase the reason is very obvious and we shall talk about that also cola drink here is an example just look at uh, the number of versions that uh, the cola drinks have and uh, this answers uh, this question or this explains you know, this uh, very aspect why uh, line extension increases the usage. You have uh, the family size bottles, you have cans, you have returnable bottles, you have other uh, offerings also which I cannot really count on my fingers. Uh, you have uh, something disposable and um, all these are meant to increase the usage of the same market uh, because the, what it is doing is it is creating the more occasions the, for usage. If you have a family bottle, uh, you know, the, you feel um, using that liberally, you know, if there's a party going on. If you have a disposable one, you can carry that with you and that is a plastic bottle the, which is free of uh, the, all the roughs and tumbles of uh, transportation. You, see, the, you, you are not really worried about uh, that getting broken. So. These are uh, the few examples of uh, the how uh, different versions uh, provide uh, the, the brand depth and hence uh, leads toward increased usage. The other thing what uh, the line extension does is, I mean good thing, is uh, it reinforces sales. I think it goes without saying that every the version uh, belongs to um, one particular mode of usage and uh, another version belongs to another mode of the usage. And when you put all those together and uh, get the net result of a higher level of usage, it automatically leads to higher level of sales. So the more products you have, uh, the more extensions that you have within the line, the more usage those create and the higher is the level of sales uh, that is brought to the company. Look at uh, there's so many different consumables that are around you which you use day in and day out with biscuits and cheeses and juices and uh, all uh, these uh, the products have so many different versions which extend the market by opening a variety of eating occasions or usage occasions. That's the, the crux of the matter that you have to extend the line in a way that it increases usage and hence sales and it does that 
because it multiplies the number of occasions when you use or when you consume those items. And that's the beauty of marketing, that you have to position or you must position your products with uh, uh, so much interesting uh, the points of difference that customers feel uh, motivated and that to start using those even if the need is not very strong at that particular point in time. Because the customer knows that he or she has this particular product for this particular occasion, that makes them feel kind of important and make them feel kind of organized that for this occasion, you know, I'm carrying this thing with me or I have this thing handy in my office or I have this thing handy in my house. So it gives you the feeling that you are better equipped, better stocked and better organized. And the net result is that you are using those items or consuming those items at occasions at which you wouldn't have otherwise could use those. So that really increases the usage and therefore the level of sales of the brand. This is a good thing. Another uh, the positive side of uh, line extensions is that uh, the brands during the process of uh, extending themselves, uh, they take on the character of being very caring and friendly. So what does that mean? Uh, what it really means is that uh, the brands respond to uh, the changing needs. The brands respond to evolution. And uh, the whatever needs you develop with the changing times, the brand is there uh, to help you with that. And uh, that is how the brands take on uh, the very caring and friendly kind of attitude. Uh, the one of the marketing experts goes to the extent of saying that brands, while they take care of your needs, they energize themselves. They energize themselves because they get ready in order to meet the next challenge. And uh, that is the beauty of brand extension because every time you introduce something, you get ready for introducing something newer with a newer point of difference and hence a different positioning which again is going to be hopefully very interesting. So brands energize themselves and in that process they become very caring, they become very interesting and uh, they become very mindful of uh, the fulfillment of your needs. Uh, to give you examples in order to clarify uh, this um, character of uh, brand extensions, I would um, say that you take a look at uh, the brand of uh, toys, toys for kids. Uh, the brand is uh, very friendly with the kids and it is very interesting. And toys are toys, they're good. Look at um, cosmetics, uh, for example. You use cosmetics uh, in order to uh, wear makeup and uh, that enhances your appearance. So wouldn't you look at the brand, whichever you are loyal with, as something very caring? It really is. The examples could, could be limitless, but I think uh, these two examples are just enough to explain how brands uh, they take on uh, this kind of a character which I'm talking about. Another uh, good side or the positive side of brand extension is that uh, brand extension pushes boundaries. This also is very obvious because you are uh, getting into area of uh, caffeine-free coffee, uh, which means that the boundary of uh, the, the business was here and uh, from here, you know, which is uh, the consumers of regular coffee, you are now going there. So you are pushing the boundary, you are increasing the market. And by pushing the boundaries, you are getting into newer areas which call for so many new different things. Not that all those new things are going to be of the total advantage. They can also cause you some disadvantages in terms of costs. But that's not the point at this moment. By pushing boundaries, it is meant that you dilate or expand the boundaries of business which you are carrying out in one particular area and then you extend that from that particular area to another. You push the boundaries uh, because you're launching your brand over and over again and uh, you are increasing its visibility and uh, that also uh, helps in uh, pushing the boundaries uh, within which uh, the brand is uh, improving and within which the brand is strengthening its domination. So that is what is meant by 
pushing the boundaries. Another uh, the good side of um, uh, line extension is that uh, line extension revitalizes failing brands. You do run into situations because when you have ailing and tired brands, what do you do? You don't let uh, those brands die their own death. You help those ailing brands with the introduction of something which is very close to those, uh, but has some different and newer features. Because you like to maintain the identity, meaning the inner core or the inner substance and the same value framework of the ailing brand. And yet you present that as something very new. And it works in many cases. If it does not, that's a separate issue. But uh, the assumption here is that that's going to work. You will recall from uh, one of the lectures earlier that uh, the brands can have a lot of resilience if um, you're dealing with a brand which has been uh, very successful and which at one time, or which has been very strong and valuable. Now, that valuable and strong brand um, is ailing and uh, it is facing some problems. It certainly has the resilience to bounce back if it is uh, given a shot in the arm. Uh, with that, uh, the shot in the arm, or with that dose of energy, you can revitalize it either in its newer form, the way I talked about, or maybe in its existing form by getting into a stepped-up communication campaign. We shall talk more about that when we start talking about the area of communications, a very important area. But the the point here is that uh, the ailing brands they do get a lot of help through extensions in one way or the other. There are so many examples of uh, the brands getting sick and uh, then bouncing back because of the resilience that they are going to have as one of the inherent um, characteristics. Uh, but of course, I would repeat that brands that never did well uh, do not have the resilience. And um, if you're dealing with a brand which is not very old and which never was valuable and strong, and you think this ailing brand could be revitalized, forget about that. Start doing something else, I think. And um, well, that is how you revitalize uh, the ailing brands. And uh, another way that you can uh, revitalize an ailing brand, which uh, is a very interesting way of uh, dealing with um, tired and sick brands is uh, doing something with the price. Uh, we know that uh, you know, the branding is driven by the dynamics of competition. I mean, if there was no competition, there would be not many brands. Well, I wouldn't say there would be no brand, but there will not be as many brands as we have. Because of the price competition, uh, your brand, which otherwise is a good brand, uh, may get um, a little bit of, uh, you know, sick. It uh, runs into uh, an ailing situation, and uh, you have to do something about that. And uh, probably in that situation, the only fix that you have at your disposal is uh, the doing, doing something with the price. And that doing something with the price is pushing the price a little bit down. Now, on the one hand, it is going to help the ailing brand because you have done something with the features. You also have brought about certain cosmetic changes in terms of packaging and all that. And you also have kicked off a communication campaign. But at the same time, you have decreased the price in the hope that sales are going to rebound. They may rebound, but at a cost. So this is not a a very the good side of it, but still is a good side because the rebounding, having the brand rebound is better than seeing the brand die its own death. So that's the point. Um, brand line, line extension. Line extension does revitalize ailing and tired brands. Uh, there are a couple of more things uh, in relation to the line extension which I would like to talk about, but uh, I would like to talk about those in the next lecture uh, due basically to the paucity of time at the moment. And uh, I will look forward to talking with you uh, then. Allah Hafiz, until that time.